Okay, the next example is about a mixing chamber. An air conditioning system involves in the mixing of cold air and warm outdoor air before the mixture is routed to the conditioned room in a steady operation. So there is one inlet and another inlet and there is one exit, okay? which is going into the room. And cold air enters the mixing chamber. Let's say here cold air comes in. Let's give numbers. Uh, let's say first inlet and then there is second inlet, which is the warm air. Cold air enters the mixing chamber at 7 degrees Celsius and 105 kilopascal and uh, at a rate of 0.55 meter cube per second. Whereas uh, the warm air enters at 34 degrees Celsius at 105 kilopascal. The ratio of mass flow rates of hot to cold streams is 1.6. Again, the ratio of the mass flow rates of the hot to cold streams is 1.6. So that means mass flow rate of the second inlet over the mass flow rate of the first inlet is 1.6. In other words, second inlet mass flow rate is 1.6 times of the first one. This, the problem tells us this, okay? So find, determine the mixture temperature here, okay? Let's say this is exit 3. They're asking for the temperature at that exit. Okay, so... Problem statement also says use specific heats. Okay. All right. So what we can do is, first of all, we know this is air that is flowing through the system. And the relationship between mass flow rates are given. To figure out the exit temperature, I can maybe figure out the exit enthalpy. And from enthalpy, I can look at table A17 and figure out the temperature. Because air is an ideal gas. And for an ideal gas, the only way to figure out the temperature is by knowing either the internal energy or enthalpy. Okay, Because enthalpy or internal energy, they are only the function of the temperature. This is for an ideal gas, of course. And let's write down then the energy balance and see from the energy balance, we can actually figure out what is the exit enthalpy, right? If we can figure that out, we can figure out what the temperature is. Now, this is a steady flow device and we write the energy balance for a steady flow device that means the rate of energy getting in has to be equal to the rate of energy getting out there are two inlets and one exit and therefore uh, the energy getting in and out in the form of mass but uh, there are no other interactions it is not um, there is no heat interaction given to us mentioned to us or no work interaction so only getting in is mass and it, the energy of it is related to its enthalpy i'm sorry this delete oh okay okay and what is getting out is mass and we want to remember the relationship between M2 and M1.
We also want to remember the mass interaction, mass balance here, mass interactions, and we can write mass balance based on that. Since there are one inlet, two inlets, and one exit, uh, whatever is getting in has to be getting out uh, in order to have a steady flow. Therefore, since this is energy balance, let's write energy balance. We can also write down the mass balance for this problem. And whatever is getting in is getting out. This is only possible because we have a steady flow device. A mixing chamber. And very good. So that means I can replace M2 in this equation with 1.6 times m1. This would give me m3 to be 2.6 times m1. All right. So actually then in the energy balance, I can replace m2 and m3 with the given information and end up with one unknown mass flow rate, which is m1, right? Okay, let's let's do that then, okay? So we are rearranging the energy balance. Instead of M2, I write 1.6 M1 H2. Instead of M3, we write 2.6 M1 H3. Okay, so now let's take a look at it. Um, actually looks like M1s are going to cancel out. And we have H1 plus 1.6 H2 equal to 2.6 H3. So if we can figure out H1 and H2, we can figure out what H is so let's solve this equation for h3 the question is now what is h1 and what is h2 we are dealing with an ideal gas, and if we know the temperatures at those inlets, we can figure out what the enthalpies are. We're going to use table A17 because we have air as a system, and if we know temperatures, we know it, right? They give us the temperature to be 7 degrees Celsius, which is 280 Kelvin. So if we take a look at the table A17 for 280, we can figure out what the enthalpy is. In the same way, since we know the temperature at another inlet, we look at the same table. we read what the enthalpy is. So now all we have to do is plug that in, right? And we find uh, exit enthalpy to be 
Okay, so the next thing is of course go to the tables and do linear interpolation. Okay, go to the table A17. And find the corresponding temperature for this enthalpy. Doing linear interpolation, we figure out the temperature is 23.6 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's it. If in this problem, they also would ask us to figure out the mass flow rates, you can also do that because all you have to do is just find M1. And we can actually do that uh, using the uh, volumetric flow rate. Okay, so let's say let's create a part B to this question and let's assume that they're asking for the mass flow rates, okay? Let's say mass flow rate at the exit, okay? They're asking for that. And how can we calculate it? We know that it is 2.6 times of the initial mass flow rate at the first inlet. So how can we find that? Actually, the question gives us uh, the volumetric flow rate. Right? If we can find the specific volume, then we can find the mass flow rate. And since this is an ideal gas, we can use RT over uh, P1. RT1, P1. Let's write down what is given to us. temperature was 7 but we need to convert to Kelvin and the pressure is 105 specific volume is 0 0.7654 meter cube per kilogram and now we just have to divide mass volumetric flow rate to uh, specific volume. Volumetric flow rate was given to us as 0.55. And we have calculated the specific volume. So the mass flow rate at the inlet is then... 0 0.7186 kilogram per second and if you are looking for the final exit mass flow rate all we have to do is now multiply that with 2.6 which should give us 1.868 that's all